Hello, um, it's me, James Beeching, 34 years old still. <clears throat> I'm doing another video blog. Um, I hate to say it's been, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry, but it has been about three months. I did a couple of these things when I was in hospital at the end of last year, and they went rather well, really, in respect of um, people sign up for the organ donation, spoke about that, hopefully people learnt some things. Um, and that's why I'm doing it, that's why I'm doing it again. It, I don't feel comfortable doing it, I don't like this. I spoke to my wife about it, I said, but I kind of feel guilty if I don't because <clears throat> I'm in a position where I can do it. Um, I don't really care what people think and how I look, as you can see from my hair. Um, and well, I have been putting it off because I don't want people to think that I'm looking for attention because I'm not. I've got lots of love in the world and I don't get any attention. I'm doing it simply for this reason. I explained it to my wife that if I, I spread awareness along with lots of other people that can and do, um, and it helps improve the chance of people getting a set of lungs or a kidney or a heart in, in years to come, and it just improves our chances, then brilliant. You know, today's, what is it they say? Today's research is tomorrow's cure. And all that business, it's true. So just trying to help people in the future. Um, so yeah, I also don't like doing these things being my face on here so long because, yeah, it makes me feel uncomfortable. So um, for Christmas, I had a wicked Christmas. By the way, you'll notice I'm not in hospital. I'm in my kitchen, look. There you go. I've had a good, winter's been good to me so far. Great. Had a lovely Christmas with the kids and the family. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, we got, or the kids got, a bucket load of Play-Doh. So... Um, bucket load of play-doh so I thought I'd talk you through what something that has happened over the Christmas though um, in December and January I got assessed for to go on the lung transplant list um, and which is a bit of an eye-opener because it kind of it, basically it's them telling you that you are that ill now that your lungs aren't going to last too much longer and this is it now you this is your there is no cure for cystic fibrosis, remember? This is kind of like all we've got at the moment is <clears throat> a new set of lungs. So I'm going to talk you through, because people still, still ask me questions and, uh, and are still unaware of certain things to do with transplant and the CF condition. So I thought I'd talk you through some bits about how the transplant hap lung transplant assessment happened, what they do, and stuff like that. So anyway, if you want to listen, listen. If you don't, <clears throat> go away. Um, and yeah, so I've made a Play-Doh version of myself to talk you through because also it gives me prompts as to what I need to talk about or waffle on about. So here we go. So here you will see a Play-Doh <coughs> representation of myself. Smiley, happy James. Um, <coughs> I'm going to go, it's to scale as best I can. I know what you're thinking. James, your arms are not that big. And it's very true. And truth be told, I have borrowed Iron Man's arms and feet. But, nevertheless, that is me. And, <clears throat> let's talk you through what they do. So, you have an assessment to see if you're fit enough to go through what is a major um, surgery to have a new set of lungs. It's not like having a tooth extraction. It's pretty big stuff. Um, and the first thing you do is you get a big old booklet through the door. And it's pretty, as you can imagine when you read something like that, it's pretty intense and it talks all, it's, it's, it's good. They, it talks you through all sorts because it's not a cure. It's, um, it's swapping, the best way to nurse said it's swapping a one chronic lung condition for another really. And I'll explain why. So let's remember, <clears throat> cystic fibrosis is, let's start from the beginning, cystic fibrosis is a faulty gene, you're born with it, CF, and it basically messes up protein, how the body deals with proteins and releasing salt, etc. I won't bore you with the major details. But what that means is, because these aren't working properly and the protein isn't getting cleared and salt isn't getting cleared correctly, these fill up with sticky, with a lot of your body fills up with sticky crap, <clears throat> sticky mucus and stuff, majorly affecting these two bits here. Mainly this one is the bit which kind of is the killer, in most cases, your lungs. So 
these fill up and are unable to clear and they fill up with mucus which therefore look I've broken a rib Oops. Um, they fill up with mucus and they cause infection hence damage hence lung transplant needed there you go it's pretty basic isn't it um, now <clears throat> So you go for an assessment, and in the assessment they check everything. They check everything from, to make sure that you're physically fit. They want to know, one, you're ill enough to, to need this transplant. Two, should you wait a little longer, kind of, um, and you don't really need it yet. Um, and three, are you fit enough, to, if you do need it, are you going to be able to have it and get through it? So they check everything from what's your lungs functions like. My lung function is currently floating around 25 to 30%. Um, and that's telling them straight away that, because it's for me, I actually feel all right. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, I feel not, not feel all right. You kind of learn to live with the fact that you're not breathing right and stuff. And um, you smile and you get on with things. And um, so I was expecting them to say, actually James, wait a little longer, but it's not the case because my lung function is pretty crap. It's, it's, yeah, it's become more difficult to breathe. I need oxygen to float. So all these other organs, my muscles, everything are all kind of, <clears throat> um, feeding it now because I'm not getting enough oxygen in my body. So I have oxygen quite a bit of the time, um, to help that. But that's not a cure, and it's, they're only getting worse. Um, and so they check everything at this assessment. You go up to this hospital up near Heathrow, it's miles away. They're a great team, um, they look after you, and you get assessed for everything. Now, when I say that, you get assessed for are you they do lung function tests? Are your lungs crap enough to need this, um, to need this operation? They check your heart to make sure that if you go through this major operation, then your heart's going to get through it. They check your kidneys because after the operation, you have certain drugs, I'll talk you through that in a minute, that will zap your kidneys. And so you need to make sure your kidneys are okay. Kidneys down here somewhere. <clears throat> I don't really know what I've done here, but um, they check everything. They scan your liver, your kidneys. They see how's your bowels doing? Okay. Your legs, you, do, you have to get up and down off of a chair to make sure that your... Um, likely to uh, that you're going to be physically fit to be able to hopefully um, get yourself up and walk around again after you've had this major surgery so they check absolutely everything and they check your noggin they check how they assess your brain um, in respect of your psychology how are you are you anxious are you scared etc they want to know that you're you're mentally ready for such a change in your life so <clears throat> yeah so that's that's what happens. What they do, <clears throat> so, hold on. Yeah, so that's me down there. Um, that's what they, they check all of that stuff. And then they came back to me and said, yeah, we're putting you on the list if you want to go on it. And it's not, the difficult bit is that it's, if you break your leg, per se, in a football match, let's do it, here we do it. Look. If you break this leg, in a football match and you're going for a dodgy tackle and this goes like this and you've broken that leg now the doctor says we need to give you surgery to fix that well the answer straight away is yes please you'd rather them just do it like this and you know it needs to immediately be done um, <clears throat> with a lung transplant it's the, the, the feeling I got from minute one was that this is all a gamble because if they phoned me today and said it's all about quality of life. Is my quality of life right this second that bad that, um, that I, I want to go and have a lung transplant? No, would be the answer, because I still can do most things with the kids, um, and I know you can enjoy life with the kids, etc. So, no, but this is why it's difficult, because by what's happened the last couple of years or so, and how... I've gone downhill at a certain rate that they know that if I don't <clears throat> get assessed and I don't get some sooner rather than later <coughs> 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 excuse me <coughs> um, 
<clears throat> then I could be too too ill to go through the operation. So they want strong people like me. Um, I say strong, physically fit people like me kind of thing. Um, to be able to get through it before I get too unwell. Uh, but that's the thing. If I don't go on the list, I become too unwell. I then get assessed and they can they say, actually, no. Then then that's it. I'm screwed for my family. I'm screwed for the future and that's it, really. Whereas if I go on the list now, <clears throat> I've got a chance. But it just feels like a gamble. It does feel like a gamble. It doesn't sit very well um, when you're making this decision. So that's why some people don't go on the list at all. Some people put it off and put it off. Um, but I've said yes because after speaking to the wife and my family, what is the alternative? We know what the alternative is. I will find myself, what the general gist of it is, I will find myself in Brompton in the hospital in a room away from my kids anyway for months and months and months and months and months and long weeks and weeks and months and months and <clears throat> and that's not a life anyway so so for that reason if I did get a call tomorrow then I'd go for it um, and so what happens then what happens if I get the call so the statistics are I think 284 days is the average wait because of my blood group my size and various things like that <clears throat> they have to match that donor to me, my body, size, um, blood group, um, anti-rejection stuff, and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it could be quite a long wait. So it's not likely to happen tomorrow, but you have to be prepared. So there's a bad pact. We have certain things, certain plans in place for the wife taking time off work and where the kids will be and who's going to look after them and stuff like that. So... You have to think a lot about things. Um, so when I go, if I get the call, and it goes through, they should I talk you through what they do quickly? Yeah, they psh, they deflate that one. Psh, they pull that one out. At the time, at this time, this lung and this heart and the heart are still working and pumping oxygen around the body. And then they put a new one in, and then they inflate it psh, once it's attached. And they do the same with that one. So as you can imagine, all that going on with all this open and massive incision around here basically means quite a lot of um, quite a lot of work afterwards, uh, quite a lot of recovery and stuff like that, and that's why, yeah, that's why the wife takes some time off and the kids will be looked after, um, etc. But hey, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. Um, yeah, what else do you? So yeah, I don't really want to bore you with all the details, there's so much, um, um, what do you need to know, and so the bit, one of the biggest things is some people say, oh it's a, that's it then, you won't have CF, that's not true, my lungs won't have CF, uh, the rest of my body will, but hopefully that won't be too much, because my, my stomach is, is pretty good, touch wood, um, but what is the major, so the, the things are, does that mean that my lungs will last like a normal person, no, the longest person with a lung transplant is 24 years um, <clears throat> and there are reasons for that that are and like I said at the beginning you're swapping one chronic lung condition for another really because once you've got these new lungs inside you um, your body will try and reject them always like having a splinter it will you know when you get a splinter and, it's, and you don't get it out it will fills with water around it and then can get red and inflamed and that's your body saying sod off and that will do it to your lungs big time so you are forever on a cocktail of drugs anti-rejection drugs um, and so what that does is it lowers your immune system to a point that will allow your lungs to stay in them stay in your body but that comes with its own dangers. So some of these drugs can mess up your kidneys and stuff and are hard on your kidneys and various organs. Okay, um, and some, and so quite a lot of the time, I've been told you can sometimes need a kidney transplant in the future as well. That's quite common. Um, um, <clears throat> but it will lower your immune system. Um, they will lower your immune system, which means you're susceptible to lots of germs. So afterwards, it's not going to be a walk in the park because your 
very isolated for the first three months and for the first year and which, the hardest one of the hardest things is talking about to the to senior nurse <coughs> specialist about it um, and how it's not advised that I would go to a children's party again with my kids not just me going to a party but with my kids to a children's party um, <coughs> because of kids and bugs and stuff like that and it's just you I wouldn't ever be allowed to be I wouldn't ever go on public transport again that sort of thing it's just just don't do it um, because you're so more because your immune system's so low so low you are you will pick up things and it will go straight to your lungs and then it's a case of then you have antibiotics again in hospital and to try to fight that infection and that will damage your lungs so <clears throat> you've got to be really careful with um, the germs you're around so shaking hands will never happen again that sort of thing hand hygiene it's weird when you talk about this and it's just it's going to be a massive change to my life if it happens but what's the alternative we keep asking myself I keep asking myself is if I don't <clears throat> I don't see my kids anymore so or my family or do you know my wife and all that um, life so it's um yeah, so it is what it is. But I'm so grateful that I even passed because some people don't get the um, the chance to even go on the list. Um, let us know and have a new set of lungs. And I know people with new sets of lungs that are still struggling a bit, and some that are getting on really well, and some that are having rejection. You get forms of rejection um, where your body's just yeah, and they got to get that balance of anti-rejection drugs right um, because if you lower the immune system ridiculously, then that's it obviously so you've got to get that balance they try and just keep your immune system just lowered enough that it goes okay we'll allow these lungs in there um, and you get different forms of rejection and that's what you talk about afterwards is your body <clears throat> you're going to be prone for chest infections again you will get elements of rejection um, that some of them they can tackle and some of them some cases they just don't they just the body doesn't want it and fights it and that's it um, yeah so it's not going to be a walk in the park if I get one, but we're going for it anyway. Um, and it does, and there are, I think it's, oh, I'm trying, I don't want to say the wrong things. I think it's a 65% chance that you get to, <clears throat> you'll get a year afterwards. 65% of people will make it a year, I think. Um, and then a good percentage of people make it to five years then. And I mean, these statistics, I believe, are going up and up. Don't quote me on any of this, um, but it's about that anyway. Um, and and yeah, if I get an extra five years with my kids, wow, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, so if you are um, someone who has still thought about going on the organ donor register, but just haven't got around to it, then please do so, because... Honestly, follow a page, I'll give you the link called Live Life, Give Life, a charity that promotes organ donation. Um, and they will show that, it, you can see on their page uh, some of the stories of, it's not just people my age, who <clears throat> with lots of life experiences and stuff, it's it's babies, young children that you can, who are dying, um, who are going to die without a new organ. So, <clears throat> talk about it more. Um, yeah, and... Hopefully, like I say, I'm doing this just because the amount of people I said to my wife, the amount of people like me and my wife know locally, that one day, one of them or one of their children, one of them have a child or a grandchild with cystic fibrosis, and hopefully I've just educated them a little bit about the condition. Um, you might come across anyone in your life who's got the condition, and now you know a little bit more about it, um, and there isn't a cure. This is the best we've got at the moment. Is a new set of lungs that won't last forever, but will give us a few more years, hopefully, um, with our loved ones. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, I'm going to put the Play-Doh away now. Um, all the best. Thanks for listening, if you have listened. Um, and uh, maybe I'll do another one at some point. But catch you soon. <laughs>